Hi, welcome to my channel, or if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. My name is Stacy. I am a therapist in private practice in the Jackson, Mississippi area, and this is Ask a Therapist. So first off, I want to just apologize for my hair. I think all of us are going through this in the corn. Um, you know, if I say the whole word, the YouTube doesn't like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're all having to figure out how to deal with our own hair. And uh, I'm resisting the urge to cut it myself. So for at least the next few weeks until stuff opens up back here in Mississippi, uh, to be dealing with a little bit of wonkiness here. All right, well now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to this week's questions. I have a bunch of questions this week. So the first question um, is anonymous and it is, do therapists have to report sexual assault even if you don't want them to? That's a toughie. I know I say that a lot, but that is a tough question. Um, so the first thing is it depends on whether or not you are a minor. If you are under the age of 18, they are probably going to want or need to at least talk to your parents about it. The second thing is if it is something that is ongoing. So especially if you are a minor, if it's something where that person is in your life, it could potentially happen again, then they are definitely going to want to talk to your parents about it. If you are an adult, it gets a little bit hazier. Um, what therapists, counselors, medical doctors, nurses, everybody like that has a duty to report are if you are a danger to yourself, if you're like suicidal, you have a plan to hurt yourself, if you're a danger to somebody else, if you're talking about harming your spouse or your child or your boss, um, and if you plan to commit a crime. So uh, things that happened in the past are typically not something that a therapist is required to report. So like if you go to a therapist and you say 10 years ago I robbed a bank, they are not required by law to report that crime to the police. However, they're probably going to want to talk to you about doing the right thing in that case. If you are an adult and you were sexually assaulted about somebody you know, my first concern would be that you are safe in the future. So if that was like your partner, your boss, a relative, even if you're an adult, I'm going to encourage you to make sure that you are safe and whether or not you report is up to you. There are a lot of reasons why people might choose not to report and regardless of my personal feelings about whether or not you should do that, that would be something that ultimately would be up to the client. So as long as you are an adult, the answer to that question is no. A therapist does not have to report a previous crime, especially if you don't want them to. It's really only if it's ongoing. If you're a minor, I think that your parents would absolutely have to know and what needs to happen from that would be something that everybody would need to discuss. Um, so a lot of that is situational, um, but if you are an adult and your therapist um, wants you to report, I would be open to discussing that with him or her to figure out what it is that they are hoping that you get out of it. Um, because ultimately what a therapist or a counselor should want is for you to get what you need. So if you're needing closure, if you're needing to regain a sense of control, I think that there are times when you reporting that 
would be very beneficial to you. Um, but I don't see a scenario where it would benefit you at all for a therapist to report that and ultimately the police would have to talk to you anyway so you would have to be involved in that. That's if you're an adult. If you're a minor it's very different but ultimately that's something that you and your parents and your therapist need to discuss together especially if it is an ongoing risk to you. So I think the only time that as an adult a therapist would have to be in a position to report when you didn't want to would be as if you are continuing to be in physical danger. So the next question comes from Emily or Amelie and she asks, as a therapist, if your client terminates therapy prematurely in your eyes, would you let them go or express your thought that perhaps they should continue therapy? For that, it would really depend on if a client says in session that they want to terminate or whether or not they call or whether or not they just don't show up. Um, in my experience, a lot of times people terminate by just not coming again. Um, and typically that happens when there's something that they're not ready to deal with yet. Maybe something's come up in therapy that uh, they're just not ready to work through. Um, if somebody knows shows on me, then typically I or the office manager will call to make sure they're okay. But beyond that, I kind of give people their own space and just say, you know, if you decide that you'd like to come back, please know that the door is always open. Please give me a call if anything changes. Please always know that you're always welcome to come back in for a session if something else comes up, you know, something along those lines. Because if a person doesn't want to be coming to therapy, they're not gonna get anything out of it. And that's true of pretty much everything. Um, you know, a lot of times, when we're talking about like addiction, recovery, um, rehabilitation, that sort of thing, people typically are very resistant to that. Um, but even in those cases, ultimately, if somebody is not willing to admit that there's a problem, ready to do the work, it doesn't do them any good to be coming. So if you think that you're done with therapy, then you're done with therapy. It doesn't matter what your therapist thinks unless you're a danger to yourself because whether or not I think you're done doesn't really matter because if I think something's an issue and you don't see it as an issue, then you're not gonna do anything in your life to make any changes. And uh, uh, yeah, that's ultimately what makes your life better coming to therapy. Yes, talking and processing is helpful, but if you're not willing to do anything differently in your life, then nothing is gonna change. So for example, I can often see when people's relationships are not healthy for them. They can't always see that, but if you're not willing to acknowledge that your relationship is unhealthy, then you're not going to benefit from me being like, you know your relationship is unhealthy, right? Um, that's more of a friend type of role. So ultimately, um, I would, if somebody said that they wanted to terminate and I didn't think that they were done unless I felt that it was beneficial to them to say something specific or unless I felt that they were a danger to themselves, I would just say, you know, I'm sorry to hear that or I'm glad that you're feeling better. The door is always open if you need me. The end. And I've had that happen before. And you know, you just have to let people know that if and when they get to the point that they need to come see somebody again, that you're ready and willing to see them. So those are our two questions for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I bring you a new Ask a Therapist every Friday. Um, it's been a little bit iffy with, uh, with me being ill, but I think we are back on track now to have one every week. 
Um, if you are interested in asking a question, you can send me an email, askstacy at stacyaldridgelcsw.com. You can also visit my website, stacyaldridgelcsw.com. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next week.